Inspector General of Police Usman Al Khalibaba has set up a special investigation team to commence investigations into allegations of extrajudicial killings. Hi, welcome to What's Happening This at the Top 10 Stories. At number one, the Inspector General of Police Usman Al Khalibaba has set up a special investigation team to commence investigations into allegations of extrajudicial killings against some police officers serving at the Zone 13 Command, Upo Dunukofia, and the Anambra State Command. This was disclosed by the first public relations officer, Olumi Yuwa Adejobi. Earlier, an anonymous blog, Gislova, had earlier published a story alleging that CSP Patrick Abazwe, a senior police officer in Anambra State, was involved in kidnapping, torture and murder of citizens. As number two, on Friday, two days after the Supreme Court adjourned the narrow suit against the federal government, protests erupted again in some parts of the country. In Lagos, there was chaos in areas around the popular Lagos Ikorodu Expressway. The protesters, which were suspected to be thugs, caused commotion at Mai 12, Ketu, and Ojota areas. In Ogun communities, youth also protested the lingering new Naira policy and fuel scarcity. It was gathered that the protesters barricaded the Moe end of the Lagos Ibadan Expressway and turned back motorists and travelers. Meanwhile, protests also broke out in Undo and Oyo states. At number three, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia has arrested and detained about 800 Nigerians for various offenses bordering on irregular migration. This was contained in a statement signed by the head public relations unit Nigeria in Diaspora Commission, Gabriel Odu, on Friday. The Saudi authorities said 45,458 illegal migrants were in the country, hence the need to get rid of the undocumented foreigners. The clampdown by the Saudi authorities began in October 2022. At number four, the All Progressive Congress has released the timetable for the Imo Kogi and Bayelsa governorship primaries and fixed the nomination fee form at 50 million naira. The governors of Imo Kogi and Bayelsa states will expire on January 14th, 26th, and February 13th, 2024, respectively, with the Independent National Electoral Commission fixing November 11th, 2023, as election day in three states. In a notice on Friday, APC's National Organizing Secretary Suleiman Agungu said delegate forms would be sold between January 30th and February 1st, 2023. APC fixed April 10th, 2023 for the governorship primaries in Imo and Bayelsa, but no date was fixed for Kogi. At number 5, the Supreme Court on Friday in Abuja affirmed Lawa Adamu Usman as the senatorial candidate of the People's Democratic Party for Kaduna Central Senatorial District of Kaduna State. The Apex Court upheld the December judgment of the Court of Appeal in Abuja, which had earlier voided and set aside the decision of the Federal High Court in Kaduna. Delivering judgment in an appeal filed by Senatorial Aspirant Ibrahim Usman, the Supreme Court held that courts have no jurisdiction to dabble into the internal and domestic affairs of political parties. And number six, Niger State Governor Abubakar Sanibello has presented checks to the tune of 17 million naira to 12 traders affected by the fire incident in New Busa, Borgu local government area. Bello presented the checks to beneficiaries at the palace of the Emir of Borgu, His Royal Highness, Alaji Mohamed Sani Haliru Dantoru Kitoru for Borgu local government area of the state. He described the inferno as unfortunate and a temporary setback to the victims. He also condoled with the Emir and the people of the Emirates over the demise of some stakeholders. At number seven, the new commissioner of police in Ebony State, Falaye Sunday Olaleye, said following the disbandment of the Ebubagu security outfit by the federal high court in Abakliki, the outfit ceased to exist in the state. The disbandment of Ebubagu generated mixed reactions and even resulted in protests by youths and other groups. The Ebony State commissioner of police has debunked the notion that the security outfit will be playing any role in the coming elections. Commissioner of Police Olaleye made a declaration while fielding questions from journalists at the police officers' mess shortly after meeting with senior police officers in police headquarters at Bakliki, capital of Ebony State. At number 8, the National Broadcasting Commission has given 30 days to foreign broadcasters who have offices in Nigeria and beam their signals into the country to come forth for registration. The Commission also called on all internet protocol television and all other broadcast stations that are streaming online to register with the Commission to avoid disconnection or prosecution. Director General of NBC Malam Balarabi Ilela said that broadcasters should note that having a digital terrestrial television or FM license does not warrant a broadcaster to stream online as there are two different licenses. And number nine, the Quara State Government has approved the release of 120 million naira's bailout funds to four tertiary institutions in the state. A statement from the Press Secretary, Ministry of Tertiary Education, Mansurat Amuda Kanike, said that the institutions are Colleges of Education in Ilorin Uru and Lafiagi, as well as the College of Arabic and Islamic Legal Studies, Ilorin. 
Amude Akanike said that the State Commissioner for Tertiary Education, Dr. Alabi Afiz Abolore, disclosed that the approval was an intervention to aid the smooth running of the institutions. Finally, at number 10, the Chief Executive Officer of YouTube, Suzanne Wojcicki, is stepping down after nine years. Wojcicki, who joined Google as its 16th employee in 1999, made this known in a statement on Thursday. She revealed she will be replaced by the current YouTube head of production, Neil Mohan. That's all for today. See you next time on What's Happening.